Facebook Live, you already know what it is. It's Coach Minach, and I'm here, and I'm, I'm just picking out the best of the best all day long. You guys know this already. You're watching my videos. I'm here with Mr. Jonathan Crompton. What's going on, guys? Charleston, South Carolina. How are y'all? Obviously, he's got a great uh, Southern Tang, and uh, I want to dip into motivation with him a little bit because he told me some things about uh, his daughter and his habits yep. and the activities that he fills his week with. And I know that there's realtors out there who need to hear this. So, yep. so Jonathan, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your real estate business in South Carolina. Uh, so last year, I did 38 deals, 10 and a half million in sales. As an individual agent, had an assistant for half the year, rehired a new agent in December. So a lot of chaos, a lot of, a lot of commotion, a lot of mess. It's a lot of mess, but it's a great, great business. For sure, right? for sure. So I, I do a lot of calling. I'm a very big cold caller. I pick up the phones, I hound them. Uh, I don't hound them, but I pick up the phones every day. Uh, was, when he says hound, he's talking about being consistent, because yeah, if you're not, it doesn't yeah, matter. Consistently, every day, 9 o'clock to 11.30, every day, Monday through Friday. You can't catch me unless I'm on my phone. I'm in the hallway, walk around, yakking it up. So, so Jonathan and I connected. We started our businesses calling sellers, expires and for sale by owners, yep. to create leverage for ourselves. Yep. And you're going to talk to eight or nine or ten people before maybe you hear your first yes, especially when you get started. Yeah. Jonathan shared with me that he's not allowed to have time with his family until he hits his goals during the week. Yep. Tell us more about that. Yep. So uh, I wanted to get a little bit higher accountability to myself. Uh, so I brought my wife in on the conversation on Friday night, and I said, I need to hit 50 contacts a day, because uh, my big why is my family. I'm a big family guy. I spend time with my little two-year-old daughter. I got another one on the way. Uh, so if I don't hit my contacts by Friday, I have to go to work on Saturday. And I work my business to the point where I don't work the weekends because that's my family time. I'm not a 24-hour realtor guy. I set expectations way up front with my clients so they know my business is... If I dentist, I don't go there at 10 o'clock at night. I'm not texting them at 10 o'clock at night. Makes sense. So I, I work it as a business. Um, so the accountability is very, very high. My wife is backing me 100% on, on that. And that Happy that, Valentine's Day to her, Yeah, right? happy Valentine's Day. I love you. She's actually looking at new cars, so hopefully okay. she picks out something nice. And she today. loves you today, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if she'll get one. Uh, but, you know, she's out there looking. But, yeah, so the high accountability. And like, surround yourself with people who want to push you. And, and not hurt you, but push you and hold you accountable to your goals. It's not hurting you by saying, you didn't make your goals, you're not gonna hang out with the family this weekend. Fair enough, fair enough. Who, who holds you accountable? Uh, so, that's a great question. My team leader in my office, Adam Roach, super strong guy, smart person. He has a great high accountability. I have a business coach as well. I got a business coach in 2014, and every year since, my business has grown at least 25%. It, you need a coach, I'm sorry, you need a coach. It's the best thing you can do. Awesome. He said a word when he was talking about how he developed his business and it had to do with expectation. Yep. And what you might find in real estate is if you're having trouble when you're putting your homes on the market and they're not selling or you're not able to communicate with your seller or the buyers that are taking you out three weekends in a row and taking all your time, all of that can be alleviated by setting different expectations earlier in the process, maybe a week, a month earlier than that. Even when I'm coaching clients, right? Yep. You brought up coaching. So often, I find that the expectations I set early in my relationship with clients tend to show up in the actions and accountability later yep. in the relationship. Sure. You mentioned about you know this year focusing on building your sphere a little bit. You've yep. done tons of transactions. Yep. You have business coming yep. in. How do you add value to the people in your real estate sphere? Oh man, that's a great question. It's actually something we're working on. My client, uh, my coaching, uh, my coach. So what we're doing is we're basically staying in touch with them and find out what's most important to them because I find that when you help people figure out what they need, you don't have to ask for business. You help them move through their life. Okay. So they're helping them in any situation. I've got guys who start up small businesses. I want to help them out. I'm going to showcase their business in my database. I'm going to showcase it on my Facebook page. I'm going to showcase it in a video of some sort. And I'm just building value for them. And I'm not asking Specific for anything in return. Specific to them. Yeah. And I'm not asking anything okay. in return. So, and the, you know, a hand that's open will also receive. Right? So if I'm like this all the time about my business and my time, I'm not going to be value. met with the same hand. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to have any value to them. So that, that's my goal um, this year is to really focus on my people. I think that's beautiful. And guys, like a quick action that you can take from that. When I got into the real estate industry, I had come from the fitness sector. So for me to call up everybody that I knew and say, hey, I'm your guy to sell your home and help you buy a home was not authentic. 
So what I spent my time doing was simply going to my top 100 people and saying, what can I do for you? If that meant connecting them to an electrician, if yep. that meant giving them recommendations on restaurants, if that meant inviting them to a free workout to come hang out with me in the park where I was gonna spend an hour. There's ways you can give to the people in your business sphere that have nothing to do with the product or service that you sell. So keep that in mind. They, people love you not just for what you do for a living, but how you make them feel and the way that you engage with them. I, I think that's a great point. Yeah. We got a question here from Jeremy Tompkins. What do you do when your coach becomes ineffective when you stop seeing results? Fire I got an answer. Them. What do you think? Fire them. I second that. Fire right? them. I, I'm on my second coach. And I love my first coach. There was so much personal growth with that first coach. I'm very good at weaseling out of things. So I find it that I was like, she was allowing me to push that line, move that red line every time, to the point where we both had a conversation. You lost that respect. Yeah, and we both did. I mean, like, because we had the conversation together. She said, you need a new coach. I said, great, because I actually was thinking about firing you today. Agreed. And, and it's not that I don't love her. I loved her. She was an amazing coach. Now my new coach is a lot more expectations, and he's not allowing me to pass that buck. Jeremy, do you have friends that were in your life at one time that are not now? Do you have a rom romantic relationship that was in your life and not now? It's the same thing, right? We're allowed to change coaches yep. just like we change our mentors and our support system. So give that thumbs up. And, and if you feel like there's something still there, <laughs> ask questions. You know, yeah. have that great conversation just yeah. like you did. I, I totally think it's worth it. You surround yourself with five people who are going to motivate you and push you. Cool. If you're the smartest one in your circle... Get, Get out of the circle. circle. <laughs> Good point. That's we got Molly here. She's from the East Coast as well. How do you evaluate the next coach and ensure or hope that they won't plateau like the first? So before I throw this over, Tim, let's be careful not to let past results impact future possibilities, right? So there's no direct correlation between how things went with your first coach and how they're going to go with your second coach. With that said, I think so I did a whole needs analysis on how I wanted my business to look. Um, I know I can go out there and cold call. I know I can go out there and find new business. I want to meet somebody who built their business by doing what I intended. Similar way. So I, that's who the coach was. I had a conversation with several coaches. I have Robert Cutler now out of Minneapolis. He built it. He's got great scripts to actually ask your past clients to, to be comfortable giving you business. Awesome. And, it, and it's just, that's how I did it. You know, I need analysis. This is what I want it to look like and go find the person. Tremendous, tremendous. So that's one side of it I think is tremendously important. Find someone that takes on and has successfully proven the strategies yep. that you want to execute on one side. And then there's this other side. And I think it's important to find a coach that shares the same value system as oh, you. Yep. Because when shit hits the fan, or when there's some sort of conflict in the relationship, or when there's a, a large challenge, yep. We're going to default to what we value. Yep. Guess what? When we start finding success together, too, and we start talking about how we're going to share our time and use our, our wealth and, and our opportunities, we want to have the same values. Yep. So whether it's good or bad, we need to make sure we're in alignment on our values. So, Molly, that's a great question as well. I really yep. appreciate you reaching out and asking that. I, I think you just find people who are doing what you want to do. It's no reinvention of the wheel, mm -hmm. right? Great so point. you find someone who's done it at a high level, and you do your best to get in that circle. Great point. Great That's point. all you do. Jonathan, you, you're, you're giving a wealth of knowledge to everybody. It's clear why people are inviting you to get interviewed all the time. We're here at Family Reunion. You guys know this already. 23,000 realtors. What's a resource, a book, an event, a conference, a seminar, something uh, good that book. you'd recommend? A good book I just finished called The Energy Bus. The Energy Bus. Read it. It's quick, easy read. Had me laughing, had me crying. I mean, great book. Phenomenal. I love totally it. check it out. Great I love book. it. That's Quick, a great recommendation. Read. I haven't read it yet either, so somebody who's watching this, type that shit yeah. in the comments so that way we could all go on Amazon and find it. And if you're smart, go make yourself an Amazon yeah. Marketplace account before you drop that link in there. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question that's a tough question to ask people and it's a Shoot. tough question to respond. But I think it's a critical element of people blowing up their business. I don't care what industry you're in. What makes you unmistakably unique? or different or fun or awesome to be around that sets you apart from every realtor who's doing 40 transactions in South Carolina. So I, that's great, I actually interviewed a couple weeks ago about that. I actually have my client's best interest at heart. I have talked people out of buying homes and we only get paid by doing what? Closing. That's true. So I, 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 I know their needs, I know what they're looking for and I will do my best to make sure they have exactly what they're looking to do. I also know that my marketing systems work and in our area, the average agents get 96% of list price, I get 99.2, so my sellers net more money just by signing up with me, and they sell it in a faster time. So that's my value proposition when I meet with sellers. Are you as clear 
on what makes you different in your no. marketplace, as my man was just now? Know your numbers, because they speak volumes. If not, write it down, right? I used to know that when we negotiated for homes, we got them for 2.5% less than the average realtor in my neighborhood. I know now as a sales coach that people don't care about how smart I am. They care about how well I can engage and pull the best out of them. I know what makes me unique now, and I'm seeing the results of my business, and I keep encouraging everybody to get super clear on that. Yeah, it, get super clear it, on it, that. They don't care what you've done. They want to know what you're going to do for them. That's right. That's 100% right. I, and that, I mean, I had the ego at one time. I did all these great sales. I thought business was going to come to me. I sat back in my chair. Two months go by. Oh, I have nothing pending. What's going on? They don't care. They, I mean, they care what you're going to do for them. That's right. That's Bring value. Right. That's, that's, that's 100% right. Let me send this back this way. I feel like I need to do this more and put myself <laughs> out there more. This is some feedback I'm getting from my audience. What question do you have for Coach Benach? How, how oh, can, man. How can, where do you see yourself this time next year? Where do I see myself this time next year? This time next year, I'm going to be getting an award at the same conference for the number one productivity coach in the entire company at Keller Williams. That's strong. So if you want to go ahead and save this video and set a reminder to send it to me in 364 days, I'd be glad for you to do that. And I'm super glad that you made me affirm that. <laughs> yeah, you need right to. Right here on video, brother. That's awesome. I appreciate you. It was very, very good. It was very good. Again, Jonathan Crompton, South Carolina, Charleston. Come so down, if you're check it out. It's one beautiful. of my snowbirds and you're looking for a nice <laughs> spot there on the water on the beach, Florida's a little too old for you, Texas is a little too far for you, Cali's way out there for you <laughs> and South Carolina is what you're thinking I love to connect you with yep. him yeah let's do it bye guys we love you have a great day